Hi, I'm Aaron Brooker, your area BEX agronomist covering Michigan and Northern Indiana. In this video series, I'll discuss the PFR proven products and practices and success strategies we've identified that I'm confident will work in Michigan. Join me as we bridge the gap and bring PFR to your farm. Hi, today I'd like to discuss uh, soybean fungicides and how we can make the most profitable soybean fungicide pass possible. And in Michigan and Northern Indiana, we really don't deal with too many foliar diseases except for a few pockets here and there. Um, so we're really targeting that plant health component of a fungicide application and trying to make these passes profitable. So PFR has done a lot of research and I wanted to talk today about some of the ways that we're gonna boost the profitability of those passes and, and improve the plant health here so we can get better yields and a better return on investment. So the biggest key here with soybean fungicide applications is hitting the right timing of application. So we want to hit the R3 reproductive stage, and that's going to be uh, when those soybean plants, one of the top four nodes with a fully developed leaf. So you're going to focus in on one of those top uh, portions of the plants, look at those top four nodes. And once uh, one of those nodes has a pod that's about a quarter inch long, so pretty small, uh, three sixteenths or a quarter inch long, that's going to indicate that we're at the R3 growth stage. And that's going to last roughly 10 days or so. Um, but for about 10 days until those pods at one of the four top four nodes reaches about three quarters inches in length. So uh, again, we've got a 10 day window, give or take, to get these applica applications made at the proper time. Now, the reason for that uh, it's, it's not fully known, but, uh, the theory is, is that they're, uh, the middle portion of the plant, uh, by the end of the season, that middle portion of the plant is what we're actively spraying there at that R3 time frame, And that's going to be where quite a bit of our yield is coming from. So we're actually spraying that fungicide and driving a lot of plant health there, um, at that time frame when the middle of the plant, when a lot of that yield is being uh, determined in that plant's growth stage. So driving improved plant health uh, for later in the season. Now the next critical thing is going to be uh, how we're making that application and the carrier rate that we're using. So making sure that we get proper coverage on these leaves to get the full effect of these fungicides. Uh, these fungicides don't move very well throughout the plant, so we want to get as good of coverage as we can. And PFR data has indicated that using 20 gallons per acre rather than 10 or even 15 gallons per acre is going to give us an advantage and, and help us improve that profitability as well. So make sure you're using the right carrier rate. Uh, again, we want to make sure we're spraying at the right time of that plant's life cycle. And then another small thing that we can do, or at least should be able to do on some of our fields, is spraying at a certain time of day. And so we have a time of day study where we sprayed at 8 a.m. in the morning or sprayed in the afternoon. And really the key here is spraying while there's uh, condensation or that dew on the leaves because that actually helps us kind of spread that fungicide out a little more on those leaves, helps with uptake of that fungicide versus that dry period uh, later in the day uh, when it's often hot and dry and we're not getting as good of coverage on that plant or maybe some of those particles are evaporating a little bit. We're just not going to get the same penetration that we did when it's cooler and possibly uh, wetter there in the morning. So that's kind of what's driving that data and where we see those benefits uh, because of that time of day aspect of making these applications. So again, the three big keys are going to be spraying at the right time frame. Again, that 10 day window or so when we're at the R3 growth stage. And keep in mind, uh, not all of our fields may reach that at the same time. And we might be past that on, at some fields, even though we think a lot of our fields might be ready to spray. The second thing, again, is going to be that carrier rate using that 20 gallons per acre. And then again, the third thing is going to be that um, time of day aspect. And again, you're not going to be able to spray every acre in the morning, but as much as possible, trying to spray when we've got that leaf wetness, when it's a little cooler out there, those plants are going to respond a little better. The final thing I wanted to talk about, especially given the season that we've had, we've had a lot of late planting this year, uh, planting a little later than we'd like to at least. And we have data on spraying a, an early planted crop versus a late planted crop with a fungicide and the difference there. 
And so as I throw this data on the screen, you can see the huge benefit to spraying those late planted crops. Now we see a benefit across any application, whether it was to an early planted crop or a late planted crop, but that late planted crop really jumps in that profitability. Now there could be a few reasons for this. One is that we're able to drive uh, seed size a little more in a late planted crop. We don't have quite as many pods and as many seeds out there that we would with that early planted crop. And maybe we're driving a little bit more seed size with an application like this. Also, again, these plants, you know, we're hitting August, uh, kind of the hottest days of the summer here where those plants are potentially a little more stressed. And if we're hitting these plants uh, at that time frame, maybe we're helping them get through that stress a little bit better uh, versus maybe that earlier planted crop that hits that. So the reason for that may not be fully understood. One uh, theory that I have is that uh, with early planted crops, we've got a lot of nodes, a lot of pods, a lot of seeds out there. And so when we're just fully loaded with those plants, we're not going to impact the size of those seeds very much. They're all going to be relatively similar in size in late season or uh, applications that we make throughout the season just aren't going to change that size as much. Whereas with a er uh, later planted crop, we don't have all the pods out there. We don't have quite as many seeds out there. And so are we able to influence the size of each of those seeds by improving the plant health? So uh, nothing's proven there. It's just a theory that I have to try to explain what's going on in this data. But regardless, we do see a clear advantage to spraying these late planted crops. Um, so as I think about which fields I'm targeting, uh, again, I think we can make money by spraying at R3 with any crop. But if I was just going out and spraying a few fields or something like that, I would target those late planted fields because we do have a little more uh, profitability that we can drive on those fields by making a fungicide application. With that, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out uh, with any of these fungicide applications on your soybean crop. I'd be happy to help.